Tom. You're a madman, but you're a genius. I love it. Thank you. Tom. Brian. You are a god. You are my higher power, my friend. You say a lot of things that people need to hear. What I was calling about is I'm a changed man listening to what you talked about. So, hey, I'm a giant fan. I'm no Vinny or Nunzio down on the dock. And all Nunzio, I forgot about him. Women are just toilet? That does not make any sense. Human okay. toilet, yes. That is crap. How um, appropriate. I don't believe you are the way you say you are, like, on the radio. And why well, is that? Because there's no way. I've been with plenty of beautiful women. I know how beautiful, classy women are, and they're not playing your game. Well, I mean, no I'm not way. looking for classy women. You and I, men, who want to be around, we need to see a freaking hot, freaking body in the corner. I have so many friends that are, you know, screwed up their lives by having kids and getting married to the first girl they have the kids to. And I'm single, going to Japan in June, going to be getting more ass in the toilet seat. You'd prefer a 20-year-old, right? Yeah, yeah, I can't get a 20-year-old, but I prefer it. But you would prefer one if you could get one. Uh, you know, it's probably not. And I know you, how you feel about this thing, but you got to talk to them. You know, I, I, don't, I wouldn't get one. Why do you have to talk to them? Just getting them for a second. Yeah, you do, yeah, you do have to talk to them. You have to say, there's a good taxi service, Beverly Hills oh, Cab, man. 273. Uh, yeah, you give them the phone number of the cab company. Oh. I'm just concerned your listeners aren't able to understand one thing. So you're saying you're smarter than the listeners. Well, because I'm female. You hold the door open more for women because you're a sexist who believes the little lady can't open her own door. Sure. I mean, I'd love to dare, go change a tire for a woman on Why? the road. I've done that before. Why not? Because it's, like, the, you know? it's called AAA. Look into it. I've been gone from her for about two years now, and it is just worth it. You know, now I go out all the time with different girls. Oh, it's a blast. I mean, I don't know what I was thinking imprisoning myself, you know. Nimai on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Nimai. What's up, brother? Not much. What kind yeah, of name is ne no What kind of name is Nimai, by the way? You have no idea. I guess you don't want to tell me. Right you are, bro. You're not listening to me. You know, you do something to the girl, a little booze and bump, I go to jail and what? I lose, right? Right. California, you don't win whatsoever. California is so full of pagans, man. I mean, it's, it's awful, man. You can't even... Full of pagans? I feel like I know everything about you. Sounds like you'd like to get to know me even better. I bet you would love that. You think so? Well, I don't know. Have you been tested this year? I'll provide you with all necessary documentation. So I see there's no point now in uh, having a drink. I just give you my test results and we'll go for it. Absolutely, why not? Look at you. I'll just put a piece of duct tape over my mouth and we'll go to town. I got news for you, man. Money don't buy dignity. And money well, not... don't buy self-respect. Well, it don't buy but grammar don't buy either, Grandma. Demo. On occasion, I may wake up and, uh, and like I said, and be dreaming that, hey, no one's in the house, it's empty. What would it be like just to wake up, go work out, uh, play some tennis, play a little bit of piano, go for a bike ride, and then go out and hang out? You want to know? <laughs> Stop by my home tomorrow morning. <laughs> From somewhere in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Really? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Put down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 866. Thank you for tuning again. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. We have wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. 
anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we'll kick your ass the hell off the telephone. Coming up this hour, you will hear uh, we, we, we debuted this song, and many of you have asked us to play it again. Oh, I'm flooded. Flooded with response here. Actually, I am getting a lot of response. Guys just want to get laid. We will play that this hour. Also, comedian Pablo Francisco will be here in the studio. And God only knows what else. Do we have that guy from Craigslist coming on, too? I think he's backing out. Is he back? I'll bet he's backing out. Wait till you hear this ad from Craigslist. We're going to read you. Meow. All you have to do here to join us on the air is call us at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Steve. Steve is listening to the online stream in Oak Harbor, Washington on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's happening? Not much. How you doing? How you doing? Actually, what I wanted to do is say, is this Tom? Uh, who oh. wants to know? No, I'm just kidding. Uh. Hey, uh, actually, what I want to talk about is uh, the TV thing. All men really care about is NFL channel, news, and politics. That's all we care about. I like the NBA. Okay. Huh? I like the NBA. Well, the NBA is cool. And, you know, I have direct TV too, but I can't afford all the stuff that you guys, that you have. But uh, eventually, hopefully, you know. I, I have everything. Here. Huh? I have every channel they have. I know. I've heard it. And that is cool. I, I just think that actually uh, I'm a Seattle Seahawks fan, and, and you know when they say uh, you can watch your home team, they've been blacked out because I chose to have uh, uh, the East Coast feed and and not get my local channels, so I don't get my local Seahawks. Well, you could get both for what another two fifty a month. No, they they changed that law. Because I used to have uh, East Coast and West Coast, and they said no. You can't get East Coast and West Coast in HD. I've got both right now. On DirecTV? Yep. Really? Yep. They they told me, they sent me a form that said that I had to choose between the East Coast feed and my local channels in, uh, wa- you know, in Washington. Well, I think I got grandfathered in because I've had direct TV since 1996. Well, I know you did, yeah. And and uh, actually, what I really wanted to call about is basically uh, about, you know, you talked about the TV thing, and I really don't care if the writers are on strike. I care less. I mean, you know, I, mean, I, I, I want them to come back, but... So you, yeah. as a person who's interested in politics and the news, you have no interest in uh, the Daily Show or the Colbert Report or anything like well, that? Well, I, I listen to the Regis and Kelly only because of Kelly. Regis and Kelly? Well, only because of Kelly. Do you have a vagina? I, actually, no. Actually, I've no? changed my mind because she sucks. Okay? Yeah. No, she really does. I mean... But I, I, I haven't watched that they, show long enough to find out. Pardon me? I haven't watched that show long enough to find out if she sucks. Well, well, I don't know either. But I know through my experience with being with, with women, and I was married 20 years and divorced, two beautiful daughters. They're both going to college. I'm going to college that... I don't really care if she sucks. Well, actually, I care if she sucks, but uh, I just like I I just like the camaraderie that Regis and Kelly have. Because it kind of reminds me. How old of, are you? How old am I? Yeah. How old are you? Well, I'll answer that, but actually, I asked you first. You're, you're, hey, 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 Tom, you're my mentor. Okay, well. so. 
I, did really I tell are. did I tell and you to watch Regis and Kelly? No, you didn't. Okay. But what I'm saying, you're right. If you, you know. do watch it, stop telling people you watch it. Exactly. I know. You you're exactly right. Another thing I wanted to talk about was um I don't remember. But <laughs> well, what are we drinking uh, today, by the way? What are we uh what's on tap today? Hey, hey, actually Actually, I wanted to talk about your winery. I, I, I don't. I, I don't you, own a winery. Well, you you own five acres or twenty acres. Twenty like acres, that. yes, up yes, in Santa sir. Barbara County. Yes. Yes, sir, and that's great. I thought that I thought I had a winery though. No, I'm going to put a vineyard in, but a vineyard yes, is not sir. a winery. Yes, sir. Okay, so you're going to put a vineyard in, and I know that you talk about wine on Saturday, and I loved it, okay? I'm a FedEx driver, uh, well, retired FedEx driver. I'm now going to college. I'm improving myself. Uh, I watch Regis and Kelly. Well, yeah, well, that's done. Trust me. <laughs> no, no, I, you can laugh. You're right. And And like I said, the only reason why I was watching that show is because of Kelly. A female. Yes, yes. I think I, I think you said that. Thank you. I'm getting a migraine. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. This is Marina on the Tom Liger Show. Hello. Hi, first time, long time, Tom. Hi, Marina. Hello. Um, I listen to your show all the time. There's, you know, things I agree with, things I don't agree with. But one thing that pretty much is the only thing that I've ever wanted to call on, and it's your idea of MySpace. I really think that you have the wrong idea about it. I know that you say all the time it's a dating website, and, you know, if women or men go on it, then they're looking to hook up. And this may be true. I'm not saying that that's not true, but I don't think that that's the reason of MySpace. And Basically, um, the other reasons people use it, if they're not promoting their career as a comedian or a musician, the other reasons are lame. They might be lame. Yeah, they might be lame, but it's definitely... You can do the same things with a telephone and an email address. You can, but not to the extent that you can with... Why would you want to make... Why would you want to communicate with people you don't know? Well, okay, for example, I have... I've had a MySpace for like four or five years now, and, you know, my page is private... I have like 130 friends on there, and every single one of them I know, whether I haven't seen them for like a couple of years, I either went to school with them, went to college with them, worked with them at one point. So everybody, like nobody on my MySpace is somebody that I don't personally know. I mean, do I get friend requests of people that I don't know all the time? Do I add them? No, but that's just what I do. I understand other people do it differently. But there. But what does MySpace do that you can't do with an email address and a phone number? Well... There's okay. Let's say that you have some kind of cause that you're doing, or for example, my fiance, he was doing a play, and you know, we, I wanted to get the word out for him. It's a small little thing, and you know, we were able to get a lot of people attention that somebody I might not necessarily, if I don't, I haven't seen him for three years, I, I probably don't want to pick up the phone and call them. But hey, it'd be nice to kind of promote the, the play that they're doing. So it's a way you can spam that. people, kind of, but, that you don't really you know, care about anymore. Not, well, a little bit, yeah, but it's not, mm. there are other reasons for it, you know, and also, let's say the younger generation, I'm I'm 26 years old, but then there's people that are, like, in high school still, or, you know, they kind of, like, oh, originally when I started it, I was on MySpace a lot more than I am now, I was kind of like, oh, your friends stop by and they write comments, and it's just stupid things that, like, you're bored, or, like, whatever, I mean, it's, it's I understand it's lame, but it's something that... If you're in a relationship, and you're that bored, it's time to leave. No, what I'm saying is I'm not right now. I don't go on MySpace. People who are, if they're that bored that they need to go on Facebook and, and buy, quote unquote, buy a drink for somebody, it's time to go. Well, they could be, they could be, let's say they're in a relationship. Here, Here's the thing is what I'm saying is somebody could have a MySpace and they could be on it like 10 times a day. Then somebody could be on, have a MySpace, but they might go, you know what, once a week on it. And that's, that's the difference. Not everybody is doing it the exact way that you're saying it. And that's. That's the only thing but, but the point is, there's there's really nothing interesting or important that you could do on MySpace. You could promote, yeah, if you're a comedian, you're trying to fill your club, you could do that. 
musician, yes. But other than that, there's really no other good reason to get on there other than to hook up. Right. There, there, are, there are no other good reasons, but there's a lot of bad reasons that, for whatever reason, there's well, a lot of people out there that, for the, a lot of the... I'm, people, what I'm saying is people can do whatever they want, but if I meet a woman and uh, she wants to have a relationship, the MySpace page, the Facebook page, it has to go. That's understandable. I'm sure a lot of guys out there would say, hey, you know, I don't want you to have a MySpace or a Facebook, but my only point is that's not the sole purpose of it, and... and not being, hey, there's... Well, that's like women saying, I go to a, a nightclub to, to dance because I like dancing. Now, technically, that may even be true. But let's face it, that's not the main reason people go to a nightclub. But can people go to a nightclub and hook up? Yes. I, no, think- that's the primary reason why people go to a nightclub. But women love to say, no, it's going to be me and my girlfriends. We're going to dance with each other. Just the, just the girls. We're just going to dance with each other because we love dancing. Yeah, but then don't people go to like don't people go to nightclubs with their you know boyfriends or girlfriends or fiancés and they just want to go have a good time? Very few. Mostly these are people who are single or it's girls' night out and there's a bunch of girls going out together looking to get male attention, even if they never actually have sex with any of the guys there. Yeah. Um, well, I, if I'm with somebody who needs more male attention than just me, I'm letting them loose. But if my attention is not enough for you, it's time for you to go. You're absolutely right about that. I, I agree with that. But my, my I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying about uh-huh. the nightclub thing. I'm just talking about the MySpace thing and how, you know, you always say that it's a, it, if a girl's on MySpace or a girl, guy's on MySpace, whatever, if someone's on MySpace and they want to hook up, that statement I'm, what I'm saying is the vast majority of people do like the vast majority of people who go to nightclubs want to get laid, okay? Are there people who are looking to learn the foxtrot who go to nightclubs? Probably there are a couple, okay? And there are people who can get, do a little salsa dancing, yes. But the bottom line is the reason people go to nightclubs, for the most part, is to hook up. See, that's where I don't so if I was with a woman who says, well, I'm not giving up going at the club just because I was... <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, we don't need to be in a relationship. Go out to clubs all you want, but pay your own rent, too. So are you comparing my space to a nightclub now? Yes, I am, club? because the vast majority of people are there to hook up. But no, it's not the vast majority. Yes, it is. Well, yes, it is. Calling. I'm not yes, call it you is. Say, no, I Just because it's not you say, doesn't it. Come on. There's so much of it going on. It's out of control. Yeah, I'm not saying... No, it's just... It's, you see, Tom... I wouldn't call if it's like, hey, Tom, I'm on MySpace, and I don't do that. I understand. It's beyond being the exception to the rule. There's a large amount. If, let's say, half the people on MySpace... I don't think half... I don't believe that for what... I believe half the people on MySpace claim they're on it for another reason. What is social networking, anyway? That's just some term somebody came up with, so you've got an excuse for being there when your boyfriend says, why you want here flirting with 827 friends? Well, I'm just social networking. It's social networking. I just, I just. What think the hell is social networking? What is that? Is Tom, I just think that it's something that's part of a. If I am with a woman, now forget the younger generation thing. If I'm with a woman, she's got eighty six thousand two hundred and fifty seven friends. I'm out. Okay, who has eighty six thousand two hundred? I don't care friends? who, but if she does, I'm out. Well, okay, who says that there's so many people that have, like the? Do you think that fifty percent of the my people have uh, eighty six thousand? No, friends? but uh, a lot of them have eight hundred friends. Nobody's got eight hundred friends in real life. Okay. How many percent of MySpace people or pages or profiles do you think that have 200 people on their friends list? Is, is that a realistic I number? don't think most people have 200 friends. You don't have 200 acquaintances that you know you don't Now we're down to acquaintances. Social, Come on. And then all the strangers you know? are there constantly asking if they can be added to your list. Come on. This is all people trying to hook up with you. You could be in denial all you want, but that's no, what it is. If you've gone to high school, if you've gone to college, if you've worked three or four different jobs, you can easily know not that many people. The, the point you is, know. if you wanted to be in touch with them, you would have their phone numbers. Right, but then you might be you might be able to network other things with, by having Network that other things. Or bring attention to a certain cause or something, whatever it is that... You're doing right. So you're saying it's a it's a clever method of spam. To a certain extent, I'm not saying it's a full. I'm just saying one of the reasons. Oh. I'm saying there's many reasons. You're and killing me, but I'm telling you, you can sit here and explain till you're blue in the face. 
Any woman who's got a MySpace page or a Facebook page cannot be in a relationship with me. End of story. All right, Tom. End of. That's it. <laughs> we'll take a break. Pablo Francisco is coming up. Tom. 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 Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. So we're listening to you last night. We're on our way to go get a bite to eat. And, uh, you know, I kind of said a remark of, like, why do all women want to have control? And she smacked the crap out of my head. She's like, why do you listen to that Tom Likas? He's turning you into a jerk. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1 800 5 800 Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Pablo Francisco is here in the studio. Good hey, to see you again. What's happening, baby? Oh, Our kids gosh. came out down, you know. Doing some shows in Bray. My dad just got married in Bray to his new wife. Really? Yeah, and she walked up to me this morning and said, I will never, ever, ever take the place of your mama, boy. I will never, ever do that to you, son. I love your papa, and I love you, too. Mama likes shortening. Mama likes shortening, shortening, shortening. Who in the hell are you? What do you want? I will never, ever, ever take the place of your mama, boy. Now stick your head right in between the digi booty. Mama likes shortening. <laughs> That's a lie. That was just for the setup of the joke. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Foo Fighters. Who's like, that? What's the sound guy? Is that the sound guy? That's the sound guy. Well, you look like the drummer of Foo Fighters. <laughs> I saw him at the Eddie Van Halen. Con- I saw him at the Van Halen concert. I think Valerie Bertinelli was playing bass. <laughs> it's like a little kid looked like Valerie Bertinelli. And then David Lee Roth goes, "Hey there, Wolfgang. Hey, how you doing?" And the kid goes, "I'm doing fine, Dolph. Get the pool on. <laughs> Running with the devil. What's your name, Wolf? I got to go home by Tom. I got to go home. <laughs> hey, but he will never ever take the place." Of your mom. I met a girl last night at uh, Bear Elegance, this one Gucci club, and her name was $400. <laughs> I took that home. Is it just me, or do Indian people sound like they're getting into hot water? <laughs> and check out my new hairdo. I just got 13 hair, more hair implants. I did. I swear to God. Right here. See? Boom. Got it in here. Oh, look at that. Went to my homeboy, Sword. He got it down here. Think of hair, think of sword, whatever, whatever, all the hair, it's looking good. But I would never, ever, Tommy, take the place of your mama, boy. You go down there, it's going to look like a catcher's man. You know what I'm saying? And you guys are boozing. I want to know. Of course. Of course. So you guys know how that work, you know, with a little sip of wine. I, I get so drunk, I sound like Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> or I sound like Ozzy Osbourne at Subway Sound. <laughs> what do you want? What bread? <laughs> what do you want, bro? <laughs> well, you take it, bro. What bread? <laughs> I love black people at Subway Sound. They turn into kings. Put some lettuce on that, please. Excuse me. Lettuce. Lettuce, please. What, what Michael Richards needs to do is make amends. He needs to make amends. I miss Ann, Dog the Bounty Hunter. He's a convicted felon, doesn't have the right to vote, but has every right to come in your house and spray mace in your face. He's Dog the Bounty Hunter. He's a mullet with a bullet. In order to find a meth head, you must look like a meth head. <laughs> Selling pot stickers around this area. <laughs> Good God. Did he get canned, too, for saying the N-word now? Is he, well, let's go to MySpace. Let's take a MySpace. I don't know. Let's take a look. MySpace. Mm, that's right. I'm below. I'm a bald-headed gang member with white socks all the way to my knees. I get on MySpace to lie to chicks. <laughs> Meet me at TGR Fridays. I have no credit. What's up, Julio? You're hot. I love the gunshots and everything. We want to do. Yeah, forever together, loser. I buy a little silver chain in the little tiny alcove right there in the in the mall. It's $20. That's right. Yeah, I love you. I got tattoos of everything that doesn't represent. I represent nothing. I, I'm American who goes after my own American people with guns. <laughs> right on. Bald-headed Latino with white socks and shorts on my space. Right on. <laughs> Let's communicate. <laughs> Thanks for having me on the show, man. You yeah, know. absolutely. 
You know how it all goes. He needs to make, he needs to make amends. Michael Richards. They're changing the N-word now to Michael Richards. What's up, my Michael Richards? Yo, my Michael Richards, what's up, Michael Richards? Please. Michael Richards, please. Now, Dog the Bounty Hunter. What's up with that guy? <laughs> Sounds like Gary Busey, Bounty Hunter. Gary Busey, Bounty Hunter. Okay, man, I went to a where I got my car drove by AAA. Then went to an AA meeting. Realized I was telling my problems to a bunch of pilots. Didn't I say that joke last time I was here? Keep on just recycling. Keep moving. I never, ever. Was a, yeah. Got my hair done right there by sword. Everything's looking good right there. <laughs> That's New Orleans. That's how the women sound, laugh in New Orleans. <laughs> You know how it is when your mama and dad. Well, then I got something else to say. Oh yeah, my name. How you doing? My name. I'm um I'm an African American escort from women too. I just want to name. My name is Pancreas. You come check me out on American Gladiators. Check me out. Don't you be calling me no Moon Cricket. You know the deal. Those are my jokes. I was writing some like his jokes. <laughs> Because it didn't work out. We're going to the whole day. Oh, thing. boy. Come Look at this. Come see the show. We're at uh, Brea Improv. If you want to come down, we'll get you the fine wine. Oh, I like that. And don't, whatever we do, do not give black people tangeray because it, you know why? Because it what? makes them speak with an English accent. Hello. <laughs> are you ready to tangeray? <laughs> Marcus, are you okay? You were sounding different before you took a shot of that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm single when I'm drunk. But after that. I go back to the wife and kids. <laughs> Let's go to the clip. Oh, yeah. My, dear MySpace. Dear MySpace Prow, what are you doing? Nothing? Here. What do you got? What do you, where do you live? My friend came. You know, MySpace sometimes can. My friend goes, hey, bro, I'm coming all the way down to Los Angeles. To, I want to be a comedian. And I'm like, all right. I met this, you know, as a bouncer at one of the clubs. I said, all right, you can do that. All right, you know, so. But I go, you know what? You can't stay with me, bro. Because when they start staying with me, they know I got a few extra rooms They want because they want to live with me. Yeah. Hey, bro, I was thinking. I have an idea. And then I could stay here while you're on the road and I do comedy. Quack, quack, quack. And he meets these MySpace ding dongs. And I don't mind MySpace. I go to it sometimes. Sometimes I just like the pictures of some kid with curly. You know, it looks like the kid from the Blue Lagoon with his with his with his, with his hands down his pants. Hi, my name's Roger. Listen to my two songs I I did on a on a music program on my computer. No, this guy out. So he comes down right. And he goes, my MySpace friends are going to pick me up on Melrose, right over there at the Improv. After I go there, never showed up. And it just happened. I was coming back from a novelty shop. One of the about 12 o'clock, right? <laughs> and uh, I was coming back, right? And I and I he just happened to call me. I go, should I pick it up? And I go, you know, you know, I'm not going to pick this up. And I pick it up. I go, hello. Hey, what's up, dude? Man, you won't believe it. What happened? I, I got stranded by my MySpace friends. <laughs> Come on down. We'll put you in my house. Then they show up. Don't call them. Don't. Don't. I don't know them that well. He's here. Oh, my God. <laughs> and they, you get blown off. <laughs> and, uh, so what I can say, you want to meet a guy in MySpace or you want to go to a... You know, you can go to a, t you know, you can dance with a guy and you always get there. So, it looks like you haven't been banged in a year. What's your name, huh? Well, from a banana boat, political refugee. Whatever. Listen, Buster. <laughs> Listen, Buster. I would never, ever. Hey, Tony Montana at Subway. Put some lettuce on our guy. <laughs> hey, come on, man. What kind of bread you want, man? You want, like, you know, sourdough bread? Just shut up and put the bread, okay? Why don't you try to stick your head? In the, in your chacha, to see your chacha, chacha. I can't cuss. How about you stick your 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 empanada in your cocody cooks? I'm looking on my hand for jokes, man. Can't, Seinfeld having an orgasm. Huh, huh, here we go. Huh, ba ding dong, bong, bing, bing, bong, bing, bing. Yeah, you come on, Ray. You know, pancreas. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for having me back to the show. Absolutely. You see, you look, that's racist, those glasses. You are incognito. <laughs> I'm telling you wear sunglasses in the hood. <laughs> Am I doing two and pinch black jokes? Because they, they, they get kind of offended. Chicken. What? Chicken? That's it. That's it. Now the, now the food is now getting them angry. All right, Pixie. That's it. You're going down. I would never, ever. 
<laughs> Latinos get too pride. Like, hey, you know, I'm Latino. I have a secret to tell you. If we can talk to you personally, we have a foundation for Latinos of rich families. If you can come, to do it for free. Can you do family it's of University of Latinos for free, Pablo? And join our little clique, and we can end the little guilt trip, the little cocorico, kirico. I like the Latinos that look for work with the no teeth. They look like vampires. Hola, ¿cómo estás? ¿Dónde está con otra? ¿Dónde está muerto trabajo? ¿Dónde está con otra? Igor, get out. Roll up the table and hit him. Pop, pop. Hola, ¿cómo estás? ¿Dónde está con Some of them sound like Michael J. Fox if they're Latino. Come on, Doc. We got to get out of here. If fucks come passing and you can go into this. Hello, ¿cómo estás? ¿Y si mucho trabajo? ¿Y si es Michael J. Fox, Flux Compositor? Si es Michael J. Fox, Flux Compositor. Acid reflux. Come on, Doc. Acid <laughs> reflux capacitor. <clears throat> Got it right there. Eh. <laughs> so you come on down to the show, and I got you. I got you the, the the new those Oakley whatever dog the bounty hunter wears. Those. I love this. Check it out. Put some you know, put some music on there. You know, absolutely. And you can yeah you know. I saw these on TV. That's the only place I've seen. That's right, my baby. And I would never ever take the place of your mama. <laughs> Mama likes. <laughs> oh, well, you know the thing. I wish I could drink down with you, but you know, I stopped drinking for now. There's always that voice for now. I'm not going to do no more drugs any for now. Wait, who, get out of my face! Get up and call your drug dealer now. Go on, get out, get away from me. For now, I stopped smoking and drinking. For, for now, shut up. Get that voice out of my head. For now, you know how the deal goes. It's all good. Here we go. Oh, oh. What the Bray Improv? If anybody wants to go and see some old stuff, new stuff, Ashley Fizeme is going to be there. He's from Haiti. And this guy, I was living with, staying with me right yeah. now from Haiti. This guy I, is huge. I mean, I, I saw him come out of the jacuzzi naked. I was like, holy smoke. He got so drunk, his penis walked him out. Don't worry, I got him. I got him, man. Way. <laughs> I was going, dude, what is that thing? George Lopez would say, that thing looks like a baby's arm holding an apple. <laughs> he was just incredible. He was incredible. <laughs> Pablo Francisco's at the Brea Improv tonight through Sunday. Yeah. You can call for reservations at number 714-482-0700, 714-482-0700. Come on down to the show. We have KT Carrera. This guy is from Japan. It's it's a multi-grain, multicultural show. And people going to, yeah, we have, uh, we have, nope, nope, opening up the show. We have, <laughs> we have, we have me, we're going to all mix it up and get together. It's going to be, it's going to be great. And after we're going to do karaoke. <laughs> Paulo, Paulo Francisco at the Bray Improv tonight through Sunday. Tom. Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. So, for you, you only get some woman you sex, and that's it. Yes, because that's what women are good for. Oh, oh my God. It's the Tom Likes Show. <laughs> It's the Tom Likas Show. That 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. I appreciate it. And uh, we are here with Pablo Francisco. And um, what's happening? I got a guy on the phone here. Mm -hmm. His name is David. And uh, David, uh, it's very romantic. David is getting married, and he's going to tell us about uh, what's going on in his life right now. Yeah, Dave, what's going on? Uh, David, are you there? Yeah, I'm right here. Okay, David. So you're getting married. That's very exciting. Yes, congratulations. Uh, well, I'm getting engaged to be married. Come on, oh, man. What? Do the full thing. What's the deal? What does that mean? You're getting engaged? You're, you're not getting married? You're just getting engaged? Sure. Yeah, I'm going to get engaged and then married. Well, isn't the purpose yeah, of getting engaged to I've ultimately gotta, get married? Uh, yeah. That's tell about that. Ad that I'm trying to sell some of my stuff to... Uh, buy the wedding ring for oh wait wait, wait. Right. how much yeah it, i mean tell everybody how much this engagement ring is going to cost it's going to be about 3500 wow 3500 
Well, to my course, you can buy a wedding ring. It's that easy. You will. I went from a one-bedroom apartment to a 10,000 square foot room selling wedding rings. Michael, tell me, that's right. If you want to make some money, check out the middle man. That's right. Just do my whole thing. Just take this crock, take it out in the corner, crunch on, and rose crown, sell it between four and nine, and you can make that money. Forget the middle man and get that wedding ring. Now, you... Well, good luck to you. I mean... Now, yeah. uh, how old are you, if you don't mind my asking, David? I'm 23. You're 23. How much, how much, what's, you're anonymous, pretty much. What is your annual income approximately? What do you make? Uh, right now I'm retired from the Marine Corps, so I got some retirement funds, and I'm helping out my mom doing some tile because I took some. I so you, you are not currently employed, is that right? That is correct. Okay. And because you are not currently employed, it, I'm looking at this list on Craigslist. It looks like you're selling some beloved electronic equipment and things like that uh, in order to buy an engagement ring? Yeah, I'm selling my uh, high-def TV and DVD player and uh, a video camera. Now, if I may ask, because we, we're just meeting for the first time, have you ever heard our radio show? I, I might have flipped the channels one or, once or twice. Maybe you should have stopped and listened for a while. Um, here's my question for you. Um, is it that important to have an engagement ring? Couldn't you just get married if you need to get married? Well, an engagement ring's key to uh, to getting married. It is? Why? Yeah. Uh, most people get an engagement ring before they get married. Yeah, but the point is you, you, you get something you can afford. You can't afford this. Well, by the time I have my job, I'll, I'll be financially set. This just gets me by until I have my job. But but maybe you just wait to get the ring. Maybe you wait to get married. Maybe you're not financially in a position to get married. Maybe you you need to wait. Maybe this is a, a red flag. Well, it's, financially, there might be a better time, but this is the time I've chosen to get married. Hmm. And the reason you're getting married at this time, is there a, is there a deadline or some... some... <laughs> There, there's no deadline, but there's definitely, this is the time that I want to do it. This is the time you want to do it because why? Because I love her and I know she's and, the right And girl. you won't love her in six months or a year? I would, but is, I've been dating her for two years, so I know that she's the right one. Yeah, but the marriage is a financial commitment, isn't it? It is a financial commitment. And if you don't have a job... And you can't even afford to buy an engagement ring. Maybe it's too soon. Maybe you need to wait until the, you're ready. The reason I don't have a job is by choice. It's not because well, I don't whatever have the reason. I'm not saying you couldn't have one. I'm saying you don't. Well, I, I don't at this moment because I'm helping out my mom. But well, that's that, a good. That's a good reason. But but uh, may, maybe that means you need to wait until you've got a job and you're more financially settled than you are today. Yeah, hey, it might. It would be easier on myself if I waited, but. Again, it's you want to make it as hard on yourself as possible. Yeah, I don't, hey, I'm, that's that's life. Yeah. So the list of uh, items here, I'm looking at them here now. You say you have a full car audio and video package, right? A DVD player, touchscreen with all options. I guess that means you can watch TV in the vehicle, which is illegal. But hey, <laughs> yeah, that's that's you know right. <laughs> yeah, when, well, the, when the car stops, when the car is completely stopped, you go to your buddies Al and Ed, and they they flick a switch, and suddenly you're watching DVDs yeah. in your dashboard. <laughs> okay, uh, and then you got uh, it says here uh, two uh, Rockford Fosgate subs, uh, custom box, custom box, custom that sounds box. Like. Uh, That's right. Uh, Rock, Rockford Fosgate uh, uh, amp. Uh, you have an iPod adapter set, all wiring. You're even offering to install it. What? <laughs> are you serious? You are also selling a, a Sony video camera. Uh-uh. Uh, is there anything else? Am I leaving something out here? And he gets two... Uh, uh, high-def TV. And the mm -hmm. high-def mm -hmm. TV. How much are you asking for that? Uh, I'm probably about 400 Mm-hmm. Dean, there's your HD TV right there. there Four hundred dollars and two and, and two eggs and hash browns at IHA. And, and all this to get married. All this to get married. You, uh, you better hope she loves you very, very much. That's all I can say. Pablo, see you at the Bray Improv. See you at the Bray, man. Thanks a lot, man. Thank Peace, you. Peace, Rita. The Tom Likas Show.